Hello and welcome to the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. This program is designed to help you to prepare and teach mathematics more easily, efficiently and effectively, to truly engage your students in mathematical thinking and to develop their numeracy. Hi everyone, welcome to the podcast. Uh, this week we're starting a new series on teaching number fact strategies and today I'm going to start with multiplication. I'm actually going to do this in two halves. I just did a, a test recording and it took me 18 minutes so um, I'm going to break this into two parts and so uh, this, this will be part one. So this is the sequence of number facts that we recommend for the teaching of number facts in multiplication. And this follows the ebook that we've put together, uh, 10 minutes a day times tables worksheets, which you may, if you've been to our website, you'll see the, the link on the right hand side to a, a sample version of that. Now, let me just put this into a little bit of context and explain what the purpose of the strategies is. Strategies are a bit like crutches that you have when you have a broken leg. So if you have a broken leg, you can either lie down and wait for your leg to heal and you just can't get around, can't do anything, or you wear crutches until your leg heals up and then when you're ready, you get rid of the crutches. Or another analogy would be training wheels on a bike. I learned to ride a bike and crashed into poles and different things and I used training wheels to uh, get me by. Anyway, so the strategies are not what we want our students to use for the rest of their life when they're working out what a number fact is. Once they know the number fact, they just go, that's the answer. Um, but when they don't know the number fact, they need a way to get there. Now, traditionally, and I'm talking about times like when I was at school a long time ago, we learned our number facts um, by memorization, by rote, by simply repeating it until it's stuck. And we teach the alphabet that way because there's no logical sequence in the alphabet. We just have to learn uh, the particular order in which the letters come. We learn the counting numbers the same way, at least up to 10, 11, 12, because there's no logic there. You just have to memorize the sequence. But in number facts, there's a logic. There are patterns. There are reasons why certain numbers come out a certain way when you do them. All right, so let's begin. And this order, this list of strategies is in order of difficulty. There could be some debate in the middle, but this is a recommended sequence. Starting with two times, the two times strategy is simply doubles. Now students by this stage will almost certainly have done addition. Hopefully they have, they shouldn't be doing this if they haven't done addition. And so they'll already have, no, have learned the doubles as addition facts. So if you say, what's two times six? And they go blank, you go, well, what's six plus six? Because that's a known fact. So the doubles. And there are lots of examples that you can give them on our website. Has a, I did a blog post on the two times and there's a, um, a worksheet you can download if you're interested to uh, show examples of that. Ten times and five times. This uses a place value strategy. 10 times is pretty obvious that it relies on place value. In fact, I tell my students it's not a number fact. If you say 10 times 7 equals 70, you're really stating a place value fact. You're saying that 7 tens is called 70. And when we write it down, there's a 7 in the tens column because it's 7 tens and there's no ones. Okay. The students love doing them because they're so easy. So you include them in the number facts that you do, but they don't um, require a great deal of attention. Now five times can be put together with the ten times because they are really easy to learn. I'll just use this ten frame up here. If you use ten frames, you can reveal quite clearly sorry about that, why there's a pattern in the five times number facts. And of course it's because five is half of ten on the ten frame reveals that very neatly. So here's an example with three fives and I've used three colors to highlight this and of course every time you get a pair of fives you've got ten and so if you have 
a number of tens and then another five you're going to have a five in the ones column and of course that explains why there's this pattern 5 10 15 20 25 30 and they just end in 5 and 0 5 and 0 5 and 0 now I think children since maths was invented have recognized that <clears throat> 5 0 pattern but when I was at school no one pointed out to me why I would have liked to know that um, as a child I like to think about things and I'm sure you know all our students do as well um, and maths is something I was interested in but nobody you know pointed it out to me so let's point it out and say give to give our students exercises to do using 10 frames this is why that gives you something to think about so when you say what six times five you know okay well if I have two fives it's ten six is three twos it must be three ten so you can you know use that logical train of thought three times the three times strategy is double plus one more. And there's that. So we rely on the two times number facts that students already know. We say, okay, you already know, for example, what two times six is. Two times six is 12. What's three times six going to be? Well, that's going to be 12 plus another six. And that's 18. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment that students have to write this out or, you know, heaven forbid, make it into an algorithm and do carrying and all that sort of palaver. This is to be done in their head. But we might write it on the board to help it, you know, become more obvious to our students. But basically, take what you know of the doubles number facts, add one more of whatever the number is, use an addition number fact strategy to work out that answer. 4 times also relies on the doubles and this time of course they are double doubles. So if students can double a number then you ask them to double the number again. Um, some of them are fairly large so if you said 4 times 9 for example what's double 9? Double 9 is 18. What's double 18? And you've got to do some regrouping because you've got to double the 8, get 16, double the 10, get 20. So there's a few steps there to do in your head so 9 times 4 would be one of the harder ones. But that strategy obviously will work and with enough time for students to get used to it, um, you know, they'll be able to memorise it. And the last one for today is the 0 times 11 times and squares. We bundled all those together and we say that those are special cases. By the way, if you're going to cover the 1s, you might notice there's no 1 times in there they would belong in here as well, and that's another special case. So multiplying by zero is a special case because of the nature of zero. And basically you can talk about having lots of nothing. So you can have, and I'd probably do this with actual containers, you know, bags and boxes and containers, and say, so well, we have a whole lot of nothing. What if we had, you know, six containers with nothing in the containers? How many do we have? And we're not counting the containers. Of course, we're counting objects in them. So in a practical, everyday, visual, kinesthetic sense, students will see straight away it's zero. Um, one times it's one lot of something or lots of one, and again, that's straightforward. That's the identity for multiplication. Eleven times is a special case. This is another set of number facts that students really enjoy doing because they're so simple. But we should highlight for students why they're so simple. Of course, 11 is made up of 110 and 11. And if you multiply both of those by the same number, you get repeated digits, at least up to 99. So 6 11s will be 6 10s and 6 1s, and of course that's 66. So it's nice and easy for students. They love doing them, but we can help them understand why. And last of all, the squares. There isn't a particular strategy for squares. They're useful numbers. They're used a lot in maths for different purposes. Um, they're a special set of numbers. So you would encourage students to learn them. There is a pattern there. You perhaps uh, probably are aware of the pattern there that if you start with one and then you add successive odd numbers, you get all the square numbers. So if you start with one and add three, you get to four. Add five, you get nine. Add seven, you get 16, and so on. And we can uh, illustrate this. You might like to do this with your students. Make a, a square region. Two by two is four, obviously. If we wanted to make that into a 3 by 3 square and we add another row and another column 
you can see we're adding an odd number because there's a copy of this and a copy of that so that part is doubled then there's plus one in the corner so that's plus five you can see if you add another row and a column you'll be adding seven and so on and so there's a sequence there so I would just encourage students to learn that as a set and uh, uh, use that as the basic strategy so that's part one of this podcast on multiplication number fact strategies and I hope you can come back for part two where we'll cover the rest of this sequence in the meantime do go to the website um, download a copy of the times tables worksheet ebook if you haven't yet done so see what you think of it um, and I'll continue with this next time thank you thank you for joining me on the classroom professor math podcast you can email me via peter at classroomprofessor.com or follow me on Twitter with the username Peter underscore Price. You can also visit our website at www.classroomprofessor.com to download free resources including the ebook 10 Minutes a Day Times Tables Worksheets. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please go and rate the show on iTunes. I look forward to speaking with you next time. And until then, goodbye.